We first define games arena by drawing a blank canvas on the screen. As standard procedure, we also need to define a game loop, which will constantly update our game state. Then we'll create classes for the snake and the fruit individually. In this classes, we can add a draw and an update method. The draw, as the name implies, draws the snake and the fruit on the screen, while the update simply contains all the code we want to constantly be updated, meaning all the code that we put in our game loop. This will, of course, include the draw method of both components individually. Next stop is to get the snake to move. First of all, add a direction property in our snake class that will be an object of x and y properties, which their values can either be 0, plus 1, or minus 1. 0 meaning no movements, plus 1 meaning forward movements, and minus 1, yeah, you guessed it, backward movements. Assuming we want the snake to move right, the direction will be y0 and x plus 1. Because since the right direction is along the x-axis, the y movement isn't needed, so it will be 0. And since right movement is a plus increment, the x will be plus 1. The same principle applies for the other directions. To now get the snake to move in these directions, we increment its x and y position by the directions of x and y respectively, times the scale of the arena grid cells. We do this to make sure the snake will always align with the fruit, regardless of its position. We now have movement but we're currently able to move in opposite directions, which isn't right. Luckily, this is an easy fix. We just need to restrict the movements by adding conditions to each of them to check if the player is moving in the opposite direction of that movement. If so, then ignore the command and keep going in that direction. Now we've successfully programmed our snake to move, but so it doesn't starve to death, we also need to make it to eat fruits. First, create the method in the fruit class to randomize the position of the fruit. Then in the snake class, we check if the position of the snake is equal to the position of the fruit. If so, we randomize the fruit position and also increase the size of the snake. We can now eat fruit but of course increasing the snake's size is only in name and we still need to apply it to our snake. This is actually the one part about coding snake I struggled with for quite some time so I'll do my best to explain it all. We need to first of all see the snake like an array of objects. Each value of the array represents a part of the snake with its x and y position. For the snake movements, it's simple. Every part of the snake will always move to the position of the body after it. I like to think of it as a formula. And since the head of the snake is the one leading the movements, we set the head to the value of the snake's x and y position. Then back in our draw method, rather than drawing just one snake, we look through the entire snake array and draw a square for each of them. For edge collisions, I've always liked the classic teleporting to the opposite edge. Doing this is quite easy. We simply check if the player has reached any of the edges of the canvas. If it has, we change its position to the opposite side of the edge. And lastly, for body collisions, we just have to loop through the snake array and then check if the head of the snake collides with any part of the snake. If so, we display a message saying the snake's dead and restart the game. And that's it. Give yourself a pat on the back because you've successfully programmed the game of snake. Sorry if this whole video was just all technical stuff. I would have loved to add more silly jokes and memes, but there's only so much I can do within a span of two minutes. But I am thinking of making this into like a serious thing where we code Nokia type games in a span of a few minutes. Um, let me know if that's something you would like to see. I think it's a dope idea, so I'll probably still do it anyways. 